Thank you, Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. After I uh, realized how much time I had, I changed the title to Brief History of Icelandic Infrastructure <laughs> Development. Uh, now, uh, we can, it, it started about 18, 871. Here in Adalstræti, very close to this premises here, in the center of the town, in a basement uh, museum there, you see a settlement from this state, 871. That's worth visiting. But uh, at that time, when the, when the so-called Vikings arrived here, they had, uh, their technology was much about seafaring, and uh, of course, they, they also had the, their typical dwellings, which were at that time rather large, uh, with long fires in the middle, and, uh, and, uh, uh, but their technology beside that was mostly the weaponry, which was very poor. We see the reminiscences of a sword from that time at the picture, but uh, they were, the, the, the steel technology was such that in the middle of the battle they had to stop to rectify their swords and then continue again. Uh, but uh, to, to help me here, there is not much happening on the infrastructure until 1906 when Iceland got its home rule because uh, the Danish king and, uh, was not very, very uh, eager to put money into, into infrastructure. Uh, and, uh, but uh, the climate went colder at that time. We were not uh, fighting with global warming, but rather with cooling. And, uh, and also, we, uh, the, the little forestry, that forest that was here was quickly uh, consumed for heating and, and those long fires. So uh, we had to make smaller houses with, uh, with uh, turf and stone walls that would isolate and keep the heat and uh, because we had very little fuel for heating in this, in this time. But as you see on the climate map there, the average temperature in in January is, is not very low in Iceland. We are in the Gulf Stream, so, so, so we don't have any extreme uh, winters here. But uh, the forces of nature in Iceland are considerable in many ways, and uh, we have to be uh, able to cope with that in some way. Of course, the seafaring uh, the, the, the was, was uh, uh, the, the utmost of utmost importance in the beginning, uh, how to reach Iceland from other countries and also the transportation in, uh, in Iceland was much at sea uh, until we could eventually bridge our, our, uh, our uh, uh, glacial rivers. But if you look at the extremes in Iceland, we have re monitored temperatures at 30.5 degree centigrade. I have never experienced such temperatures myself, and I'm over 60 years of age, so I don't know where they got that. And, and, uh, uh, but, but normally the average temperature in July is, is 14 degrees, so, so, and the average temperature in the, in the lived areas in Iceland is the same temperature as we have in our refrigerators in our home. Uh, but of course it varies over the year. Now, uh, but uh, uh, we have big winds. That is probably the, the, our, our, our most, most uh, severe forces that we have to work with, uh, that uh, the max wind speed in gust can all go up to 75 meters. And, and that's, that's, that's a very, very strong wind. Uh, but mostly it's the, when, we, when it comes to to, uh, to building high edifices, the, the uh, nasty cocktail for us is when we have wind and when we have freezing and precipitation uh, together and making icing on our masts, on our wiring, uh, putting huge extra loads. And uh, so, so this, is, this is what we have to design for. Uh, we also have earthquakes. Not the nastiest on the, on the, on the, on the globe because the, the, the Iceland is, is torn apart here. So that means that the, the, the earthquakes, even if they are frequent, 
they don't get as nasty as in many other countries, but we can have, we have of course designed our buildings for that, and, uh, but we are not suffer, suffering uh, major uh, casualties, but of course uh, the damages for porcelain can be severe when such things happen. Uh, now, as I said before, uh, uh, most of our transportation before was at sea because we could hardly cross the glacial river. It, it was very difficult. We, we had to do that by boat. And uh, the first bridge uh, over a glacial river was built in 1891 by a contract with the king. And that was uh, lasted for about uh, 50 years. And then this truck going over it went into the river and, and the artist has seen this as a very good uh, dramatic motive for his for his doings. Uh, now, uh, when, when this happened, of course, there was a new bridge built and, and the, the roads around, uh, the bridges around Iceland were, were gradually uh, built up and, and were, the glacial rivers were, were somehow shortcutted in that way. And um, one of the other uh, very important uh, aspects of infrastructure are the harbors. And, uh, but we only, the first harbor was the old harbor in Reykjavik started to be built in 1913. That was about uh, nine years after we got our home rule. So then we started to build up the infrastructure. Uh, so this is where we are now. We are at this old harbor in the Harpa. And uh, of course, uh, I think the, build, the picture must be taken from that, that angle, that, uh, the Harpa angle. And uh, what was interesting with this building of this harbor, that uh, the, the, the rocks and, and, uh, and uh, material used for the harbor was, har was harnessed in the, in the hills above Reykjavik, and then moved to the harbor with, the, with, the, uh, with a railroad. And that was the beginning and the end of uh, the Icelandic railway history. There was never ever built any railway after that, which was a, a big which was a big uh, mistake, of course, because uh, we would be better off with electrical, uh, electrical uh, railways. Uh, just some milestones. Uh, I, I, I spoke about the Home Rule in, in 1904, when, when really infrastructures were being started to be planned, and we got the first waterworks in Reykjavik in 1909. Uh, the first Marconi telegram to Iceland was in 1905. Overseas telephone connection came also in 1905 under big protest because many people thought that since we could receive Marconi telegrams, why would we need a telephone connection? So, so that was one of the, the, the political issues at that, that time. We started to build our, out our geothermal district heating in 1930. And that went on, and uh, uh, we had uh, covered about 42% of all homes with the geothermal district heating in the 70s when the energy crisis came. And we continued to build out the district heating after that, of course, with, with, uh, with big investments. The biggest uh, pipe, the longest pipe between uh, the well and the furthest customer in Iceland is 63 kilometers. But uh, after this effort, we are now, 90% uh, of the homes in Iceland are with district heating, connected to district heating from geothermal. And the rest of the, the, uh, the dwellings are from, from heated with electricity. Uh, the road connection from Reykjavik to Akureyri, uh, it was first opened in, for traffic in 1940. Uh, uh, very recently. And the final connection of the National Road 1 around Iceland, bridging the last glacial rivers, was in 1974. And I remember that that summer I hired, uh, I was working for the same institute I work for now, and I hired a very big Studebaker truck to put my Jeep on the, on the, on the, uh, uh, on the back of the truck and, and pass this river at six o'clock in the morning when it was the lowest, but that was the last time that, uh, for me at least, that this had been done because 
uh, since then we had the bridges. So you will learn more about the, the electrical infrastructure of Iceland, so I will not dwell on that. Thank you. <laughs>